Da, 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 da. I don't know. We're still workshopping the name. Hi, guys. Rio here. <clears throat> and I'm here to talk to you with the first of my series of film reviews. Uh, this is kind of exciting. This is actually a really fun film. We're going to be talking about a film that's coming out at the end of June called Arena Wars. And welcome to the next exciting episode of Arena Wars. But let me talk to you guys a little bit about my process and how I do reviews. I don't just tell you about the movie. Um, I like to go into the cast and crew, people that worked on, like the costume designers, the makeup artists, the score composers. I kind of like to look at all the different people that have worked on this other than the people you see on camera. Um, you know, I try to research them when I can. Uh, sometimes films are a little bit too indie and I don't get to find any information. They might not have an IMDb listing, for instance. Um, so sometimes you got to get clever. Now, with this one, we don't have that problem. So we're going to start right now. We're going to start talking about the cast. Okay, so first of all, this whole thing was written and directed by Brandon Slagle. Now, I know his name. Um, I did look up a lot of his other projects. And honestly, probably stuff I've seen, I don't recognize the title. Um, but he's got a lot of uh, experience behind him, a lot of projects that he's worked on behind him. Um, and that seems to be true for a lot of the people that are in this cast. Okay, um, I don't have to try very hard when I say Michael Madsen. I don't got to try very hard when I say Eric Roberts, right? Right. I don't got to try very hard. These people are in the movie. I'll be watching. Um, a friend of mine mentioned there's actually a video game called this. Um, now, I don't know if this is any relation to the video game, but what we're looking at here is uh, what you have is a bunch of prisoners and uh, they compete on a reality show with <laughs> super high stakes. You either die or you get out. Right? It's like get out of jail free if you manage to kill enough people on the way out. You make it out alive. You get to go home. This is not the running man. Um this there's a lot more that's kind of going on here. Um they have some interesting statements being made, like absolute indictments of like reality TV and social media. Um <clears throat> probably more relevant than the original running man would be in the modern day. Um it relates a lot more. And the way that people disassociate with what they see on a screen. Um they just assume it's fiction, or even if it's not, and they know that, they don't care, right? There, there's like a total disconnect these days, and this makes a really big statement about that. Uh, on every level of the characters, where throughout the story, you see how this whole thing is being manipulated, and how this whole thing is just a farce to the people that are involved, and to the people that are watching, and to the people that are doing this. Press the showing out there tonight. You're the new fan favorite. Our primary hero is a character called Luke Bender. And he's played by John Wells. Now, again, another actor that has a lot of, like, a long list of credits. Um, again, I don't think are things I've seen. But clearly, this guy has done a lot of work with a lot of different directors and different genres. So he knows what he's doing. Um, he is our primary character, Luke Bender. And uh, Luke Bender is, uh, well, he's not guilty. <laughs> right? Luke Bender. You're an innocent man. Innocent man can mean big ratings. Yeah, we follow him and this group that's with him. Um, all of the actors that show up in this thing are really good. Um, I have no hate for any of them. Um, I do want to call out a couple specifically. Um, I want to call out, I uh, uh, hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly, Kylie Fulmer. Uh, she plays a character called Billy, which is one of this group that gets sent through the game. And actually, I kept looking at her thinking she looked familiar. That I knew who she was. Um, and I'm like, I know who that is. I know who that is. Yeah, I know who that is. Uh, she's actually a, uh, she's a champion in, uh, <laughs> in like an Australian women's boxing league. Uh, she is indeed an athlete. Um, so, and you look at her and you can see it, you know? Um, and she actually does a really good job in this. Like, a lot of time when you see athletes coming into movies, you know, we, we can talk about, you know, Hulk Hogan and the nanny. We can talk about a lot of things that we're like, mm -mm, no. Um, actually, she does a really good job. Uh, she very much sells it. She's very good at it. She really does present. Um, all the characters are believable. All the characters are, even the characters you don't like so much, right? Because some of these characters, by story, are some pretty vile criminals. Close on the line. Roborg has offered you a check it out. Win Arena Wars, win your freedom. But you actually do find yourself cheering for them because they do a very good job of giving you information on these characters. Um, they managed to make the, the absolutely most dreadful kind of character is actually sympathetic. Um, that shouldn't be true, but it is. Um, it's, I, it's, it's really brilliant writing. And again, Brandon Slagle, who was the writer and also the director, um, 
I think he did a really good job of making us really care about these characters, even though technically I don't think we're supposed to. Are you with me? One of the things I love about a movie like this is that a lot of times you'll have people wearing different hats. Uh, God knows I've worked on enough indie films where the credit list is like eight things and it's one name, right? Okay, this isn't quite that, but we do have one of our characters called Domino, and she's actually kind of important to the story. Uh, Domino is actually played by a woman named Mercedes Peterson, who was also the costume coordinator for the movie, right? So again, I'm always there for that. That's the kind of thing you see in independent films where you see people doing different things on the set. Um, <clears throat> us in the audience, if you're just watching the movie, you don't know that. But when you see this kind of a thing going on with an independent film, that's because you you tap every talent you have. And <clears throat> I love that she's a costume coordinator, so let's talk about the costuming. Um, well, first of all, our gladiators are a blast. Um, they are the single most over-the-top characters uh in the entirety of the movie and the, the the gladiators are great seven arenas with seven of the most vicious killers the world has seen in the last decade wonderful designs going on with the costuming and then of course she's there on the screen as a character that's in the movie for quite a bit of time so she had a lot to do and uh she didn't skimp on either one is my point um and as all of this plays out, right, and you see, and you start to learn more about the different layers of the characters and different layers of what the problems are, um, we, of course, do have our villain. We have our absolute villain. Um, our absolute villain is, uh, yeah, he's great, guys. Um, the, all our characters are great. Like, they really do make a point of making all the characters interesting. Um, so, and I, I, I can't really call out each individual one just because that would take me forever right now because there are a lot of characters in this movie, believe it or not. Um... I do want to call out, though, if you're going to do a satire of reality TV, if you're going to do a satire of this sort of thing, then you have to have your crazy host, right? Yeah. Um, now, as is going to be bound to happen when I do a lot of these reviews, you're going to find out that in most of these films, there's going to be somebody I know. <laughs> someone I've met, someone I've worked with, someone I am associated with in the industry. So, let's talk about Sherry Davis. Um, I've reviewed a number of her films over time uh, with Horror News. And uh, I got to know her over the course of time, uh, talking on social media and whatnot. And actually, I remember when she was shooting this film. Because I remember seeing like the photos of her costume tests and stuff. Um, she is brilliant. She is hilarious. Um, and she does just an absolutely amazing job in this. Um, it... There's just, there's so many things going on in this movie. And don't get me wrong, I'm a huge fan of a dystopian fiction. I will never, ever turn up my nose at a dystopian fiction. Fresh batch of institutionalized gladiators fighting for their freedom. Red, here we go. You got time for us? That's not a lot. Um, a lot of cosplay opportunities uh, <laughs> in this movie, you guys. Um... Just talking about some of the, just talking about Sherry's costuming alone, but let's also talk about some of these gladiators, man. I'm already looking at a cutie pie cosplay. <laughs> cutie pie back for the kill. I think if anything, if I have any judgment at all, I think it would probably be that there's not a lot of female characters. Um, there's, I mean, there is. Uh, you have Sherry's character, of course. You have Holly Days, and then you have um, uh, the, uh, and then you have, of course, you have Kylie Fulmer. Um, who's playing her character's name is Billy, I believe. Um, you, so you have a few female characters that are kind of first and in, in, are like in the forefront. Um, but of course it's mostly a boys club. And then of course you have the one female gladiator, but the rest of it is, it's all men, which I don't hate that necessarily. Um, kind of to be expected, I suppose. Most of your female characters, um, these are not shrinking violets. Um, these are not characters that are, uh, -uh, uh -uh. No, these are women who are playing hardened criminals. These are women who are playing the the ring announcer for one of the most brutal things that's ever been broadcast, right? Um, and so, yeah, they're not pathetic women. These are independent, they're strong, and they hold their own all the way through the movie. So <clears throat> it's important to keep that in mind, that while it is a mostly male cast, the female characters are not... passes the Bechtel test, I guess? Um, I, I like them quite a bit. Smile for the camera, thug life. Wow. So, yeah, uh, camera angles. Let's talk about, uh, Brandon's directing on this. Um, I need to look up the name of the, of the DP. Um, 
really interesting use of the camera um, in this. It's one of the things that really stood out to me is the way that some of the camera angles, when you have a group fighting the gladiator, so if there's like three or more people in there and then here's your encounter, um, the camera angle is in the group. So it almost becomes a POV, like you're in the group. Now, if it's just two people fighting, it's almost a standard camera angle, just showing you here we are. But when it's a group of people, the camera puts you in the group. That was, uh, I thought that was a really, really, really clever touch. I thought that was a really good way to shoot that because it circles around the fight and in and out of it. So it looks like you're in it, like you're dodging the same hits, like you're trying to survive too. <clears throat> Normally I get mad when they switch between, you know, camera angle and POV, but I don't in this one because it kind of helps build the, um, it helps to build the jeopardy and give you a real feel of what that might be like. You know, if you're trying to make a statement like this movie's trying to make, if you're trying to say these things, then it's important that while the audience in the film are detached, we shouldn't be because they want us to pay attention, right? We should be listening. Um, people in the audience, when they go around, you know, like they do like at the WWE or whatever else, they go and be like, say, hey, who are you rooting for today? Right? It's like this kind of stuff. Um, there's a fair amount of that. And it's very interesting. The different actors that are kind of in the crowd um, and the things they have to say. <clears throat> it's absolutely an indictment, I think, of uh, the obsession with the reality TV and how it, <clears throat> I've heard someone else say that things like reality television, like Survivor, things like that, Naked and Afraid, right? Like this kind of stuff. I've heard people say that it's just a return to the gladiatorial games, you know, of ancient Rome. Um, not sure they're wrong. And I don't think uh, Brandon disagrees either, because there's a lot of that going on in this movie. I'm there for this one, for sure. Um, <clears throat> my, as I understand it, it comes out at the end of June. Um, I will put a link to the official trailer, uh, down in the, uh, description. <clears throat> so you guys can go and watch the full trailer for yourselves and check out their website and stuff to find out when they're releasing. Um, but yeah, um, uh, I recommend. I think it's good. Um, I think I'm gonna do, should we do like a, like a five-star system or something? Is that, is that, is that how this works? Um, I guess, uh, we'll do a one out of five. We'll do a one out of five, and I will give it four chainsaws. How about that? Because chainsaws. <laughs> so, guys, yeah, I recommend. Okay, so that's my first one. Um, I'll have some more coming soon. Uh, next week, we'll be doing, like I said, every Wednesday, I'll be doing new reviews. Um, as I said, I'm not sponsored. I'm not paid. I do this because I want to. So, uh, if you guys want to uh, hit that little, little button down there, little subscribe button, and uh, you'll get notifications uh, when my reviews go up. And uh, hopefully, we'll hang out and do this again next week. <laughs> Bye, guys. Oh, and help me workshop that name. <laughs> I'm sure someone's probably using Movie Nerd. Yeah? yeah probably.